Hi, welcome to our Daily Bread. I'm Father Paul Seil, and today we're going to be talking about uh, ministry in the central city and how it's a, a very specialized ministry, but it's something through which many of our seminarians go before they get ordained to the uh, priesthood, before they enter holy orders. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit preoccupied here. I don't want to cut myself with this cucumber. I'm going to make some gazpacho, which, because uh, our show today, the food-wise, it kind of has a little bit of a, a Latin theme, gazpacho. And I know that Cass Kathy Castillo is going to be joining us from Christ the King Seminary. And she is the director of these placements in Central City Ministry. And then we've got a seminarian who's going to be with us as well, who's gone through this ministry and uh, this experience. We're going to talk about it. I actually don't know what he's going to make, and Kathy's not here yet, so I want to get going with my gazpacho before we, uh, before we move on too much. Now, gazpacho is really a vegetarian dish made of fresh vegetables. And, you know, the central, and by the way, I'm seeding, I'm taking most of this, as many of the seeds as I can get out of this cucumber. I'm going to get them out of here. By the way, I had an, uh, one of the old Oster blenders, and it kind of gave up the ghost recently. So uh, Paula, our producer, loaned me her husband's this is a ninja, like 5,000, and I'm a little afraid of it, but I, I think it's going to do what we need it to do. It's, so I'm going to take one cucumber. I'm going to take uh, either a small, medium, or a half of a large, half a large onion, which is what I've got here. Half a large. Let me get another knife here if I could. And I'm going to give these just rough chops because I'm going to put it into the ninja, you know, blender and... It's going to do its thing, I guess. It's a little, a little different from what I'm used to. Here we go. Now, uh, I have lovely, wonderful, happy memories of my Central City experience. That was in the summer of, uh, I'm going to say it was like 19, 1984, when I was a young guy. And uh, I was assigned to a church called St. Mary of Sorrows, which has since uh, merged into another parish. But for me, it was a great experience, and it was something I had never had the opportunity really to experience before. Uh, people who uh, did not live in the same economic or social uh, kind of group that I was used to uh, kind of being with. And I have some fantastic, I mean, one of my favorite memories was working bingo nights at the church. And the great thing was after bingo, uh, there was a, a, the old people who came in were Germans, you know, and they'd come in, the, the city, the neighborhood had changed culturally, but they would come in still to support the parish and they would do it by working bingo. And I mean, the youngest person there was probably in their mid-70s up to their 90s. And at the end of the bingo night, all the workers, including me, we'd get together, and they'd bring out beer and black velvet whiskey, and they'd bring out Limburger cheese with pickles on it, on rye bread. Or you could have bologna if you were more traditional. Never had Limburger before that, but I guess it was probably the beer that helped the Limburger go down. So I learned a little bit about their culture. But not only that, also about the African-American culture, because many of the people in our neighborhood, especially the kids, were from families that uh, came to our church, for some for worship, many for uh, agency activities that were going on there, social activities, social services kinds of activities with Catholic charities, and all kinds of things. So it's a great experience, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it may have changed or not over these uh, number of years. Hey, I'm taking a red pepper now, a red bell pepper, and I'm going to chop that up a little bit and put that in here. And uh, the juice of one lime. Now, gazpacho is like a lot of the recipes I make. It's got a lot of uh, variations. People do it different way, ways. This one actually has bread in it. You don't have to put bread in it. It's kind of a thickening agent. And if you want to keep this gluten-free, you could well do it without the bread and just use a little bit less liquid. The lime is going to give it that acid tang that we want, as is the 28 ounces or so of tomatoes that we're going to put in here. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to dump it all in the Ninja here. I'm really excited about trying this thing out. About a cup of water. We want about a quarter cup of olive oil. That's about a quarter cup. I'm going to put in some chipotle chilies in adobo sauce. I'm going to put two of these in. They're going, to, they're going to add a nice little smoky and a little bit of heat, but not too much. Actually, I'm going to pour a little of that sauce in because I love the way that tastes. Uh, a clove of garlic, some cumin seeds, 
about a tablespoon. Cumin really adds a, a very earthy kind of pungent flavor that's really very distinctive and hard to describe, I find. Uh, a little bit of ooh, a pinch of salt, a big pinch of salt because there's no other salt in there and that's going to give a little edge to the uh, tomatoes and the other vegetables. And I'm going to put in some smoked paprika. I like it. I'm going to put, oh, that's about a little, probably a, a tablespoon and a half has gone in there. Uh, a little bit of vinegar, again, a little acid, about a quarter of a cup of red wine vinegar there. Did I get everything? I didn't get the bread. There we go. And we're going to put the bread in, too. Now, this recipe actually calls for four cups if you look it up on our website, odbtv.org. But I'm just putting in one thick slice of bread. And then if I need more to thicken it, I will do that later. All right, let's see. You ready? Stand back. Ooh. I want to chop this up, but I don't want it like, you know, smooth as silk. I want it to be a little chunky. I want to have that flavor. But I also want a texture that's not like mush. So I'm going to, that's enough. Um, let's see, this goes like this. Oh, this comes off like that. Okay. Uh, ba -ba -bum. Now what I'm going to do, you can strain this, but I don't like to strain it because you're losing all that good stuff in there, all the vitamins and the extra little things and the skins and all that. So I'm going to put this right in here. Whoa! <laughs> okay, there we go. That'll be fine. As Aunt Hilda used to say, no harm done. Now this is going to be our, this is our gazpacho, but I'm going to chill that for at least an hour. This is going to be, a, a, I think, I hope, a wonderful um, kind of first course in our Latin meal today. These are little votive, votive candle holders, right? Because, you know, people aren't going to eat a lot of gazpacho. In fact, some of them are going to say, I don't want to even try it because they're stubborn and they're not willing to try new things sometimes, okay? So you're gonna try it though because you're gonna say, wow, that's really fresh, that looks great, that's so, that's so different, Father Paul. I'm really gonna try this. And just to give it a little more zing, I'm putting a little dollop of sour cream on the top. This is uh, low-fat sour cream, by the way, so, and again, you don't have to have the sour cream. And let's see, how about a little, you know what? Just, I don't want to give too much flavor. I just want a little sprig of parsley there. There's our gazpacho. Let's see how it tastes. Mm. Ooh, spicy, earthy, tomatoey. Tastes like you're drinking something right out of the garden, which we really are. That's a good starter for our meal today. And we'll be back with more, and we'll talk about Central City and other ministry experience when we come back on our Daily Bread right after this. Welcome back to our daily bread. Now, I promised we were going to have paella, and I still hope we are, but the guest who's going to make it hasn't shown up yet, Kathy Castillo, and it could very well be that she's been delayed by who knows what. I'm hopeful, and I'm pretty sure she's okay, but with ministry, sometimes you have to really be adaptive, and so we're going to adapt to the situation. I'm going to make another dish that I didn't expect to, but a real easy dish, but really something that's really kind of stick to the ribs and really a good dish which is called shrimp and grits. But I'm especially happy to welcome our guest and Venetius Abba Sierra. Correct. Is that how I say it? Yes, Father. Oh, good. I did okay. Good. And you are from Nigeria. Yes, Father. And what are you doing in the United States of America? I'm actually studying at Christ the King Seminary in East Aurora, New York for the Diocese of Buffalo. So you are hoping to be ordained a priest in the Diocese of Buffalo in what year, do you think? Actually, I will be ordained in the summer of 2016. You ever have shrimp and grits? Oh, yeah. Yeah, good. Okay. I'm going to throw in a little bit of uh, salt into our already salted water. Uh, I'm going to put a, a, 
about a teaspoon, I did wash my hands, a teaspoon of crushed garlic, a little bit of black pepper, a little bit of basil. Oh, let me get that going here. Dried basil in this case, about a teaspoonful. And uh, Venetius, could you bring me that bowl of white grits? Okay. And could you dump those right in from the, the back side here? That's perfect. Okay. Now, I'm going to give these a couple of stirs. And in this pan, I'm going to make what we're going to mix with the grits. But, uh, you know, would you mind, uh, could you cut up some bacon here just with the scissors? This is a kitchen scissors, so if you want to cut that bacon up in small pieces, I got the shrimp. This is something that's really growing in popularity. You see in a lot of even the better, you know, restaurants. Sometimes the best food is something that we're most familiar with. Now, I had some great uh, experiences with food in the uh, central city. I learned some new types of food, especially down in New Orleans. What was it like for you being in the central city of Buffalo? Well, the central city practicum we had in Buffalo was very, very interesting, very, very eye-opening, and very educative and informative. Uh, we were exposed to different ministries. We went to the holding center, the courts. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's do it one by a time so people who might not be familiar with this know about it. The holding center is the Erie County Holding Center, which is the county in which the city of Buffalo resides. Yes. By the way, I'm cutting up uh, in thin strips some smoked Gouda with bacon in the smoked Gouda that we're going to put into our shrimp and grits. So, okay, so you would go to the holding center, and what would you do there with the incarcerated uh, people? We try to advocate for justice for uh -huh. them and uh, try to create awareness that our youths need job, not jail. Our youth need job, not jails. Now, this, uh, this sounds very political to me. How does that have to do with the gospel? Actually, we are bringing into action the social teaching of the church, you know, carrying the justice message mm -hmm. to the society, to the streets bringing that awareness to the people living out the social teachings of the church. I see. Now, I, I mean, I don't mean to be, how do, can I say this and not sound kind of uh, impolite? Why don't you do this in Nigeria? Well, why did you come to Buffalo would be the question. Actually, the reason why I came to Buffalo is because of the shortage of priests here. Uh -huh. I realized that it was the white missionaries that brought the gospel to us. And now the Catholic Church is flourishing in my country. We have a lot of vocations. Mm -hmm. And we figured out that we can be of help to countries that have had decline in vocations in many years, like United States. That was actually why I decided to come here to be of help. So That's interesting. So here. because white missionaries brought the faith to Africa, to Nigeria, yes, in your case, yes. now you're helping to maintain the faith in the United States. Exactly. I'm going to put in this uh, bacon into our little frying pan here. Let me check on these grits because they're really bubbling away. Uh, let me give those a little stir there too. Whoa! I'm, by the way, I'm putting in our smoked gouda, which I'm going to melt down with those grits. And our bacon's looking really good there, too. This is not a light dish. By the way, um, when you were in Central City, you lived, you said, at St. Columba Bridget Parish, right? Yeah, we lived at St. Columba Bridget Church, yeah. Yes. We have people from the uh, Middle East, people from Africa, mm -hmm. people from the Spanish-speaking countries, and again, people from the United States, too. Yes. It's a lot, it's, uh, you know, so culturally diverse. I've got my uh, bacon going here. I'm going to drop in my, this is cooked Devane shrimp. Uh, I'm just going to heat that through with the bacon. This is about four tablespoons of butter that I'm going to just swirl in. That's quite hot. Our grits with that smoked Gouda bacon cheese that actually is produced locally in western New York. I got the bacon. I got the shrimp. And I also have a little bit of barbecue sauce. Now this is a commercial barbecue sauce that then I uh, doctored up with a little chipotle sauce and a little bit of maple syrup from New York State. And I'm going to put just a little bit in there, coat that, and we're just about ready to go with this. So you see how quickly, I mean, shrimp and grits is done in just about no time at all. Now you got your bacon smoky gouda, or a little bit of herbs and spices in there. I want to just put this bacon and shrimp around here like this. 
I'm not just going to lob it on, but I'm going to kind of make a little pattern here. And what we're going to do when we dig into this, you, you just get a few of the shrimp and a little of the bacon and a little of that nice barbecue sauce that I doctored up with maple and chipotle. And we got to, of course, watch out for the, uh, watch out for the tails on the shrimp. Father, you want to bring the, the plates and the spoon over here? Let's see. I'm just going to put a little drizzle of this around. Ooh, there we go. Beautiful. Okay. You want to say a little prayer? Okay. Go ahead. Oh, uh, bless us, O oh Lord, and bless this meal which we are about to receive out of your goodness through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I love these creamy grits with the cheese, and mm -hmm. it's like I said, it's kind of a little decadent meal, but it's very, uh, very tasty, very stick to your ribs, very filling. Mm -hmm. Don't go away. We're going to be back with some more about the Central City Living Experience that our seminarians experience here in the Diocese of Buffalo, and hopefully we're going to have some paella, but we'll have something for you when we come back right after this on Our Daily Bread. Hi, welcome back to our Daily Bread. I'm Father Paul Sile, and joining me in the kitchen, we're very happy to see her here because we know she's safe, and we also are looking forward to the paella. I love paella. And this is Kathleen Murphy Castillo. And Kathleen, you go by Kathy generally. Yes. And you are the director of, watch your fingers. Don't look, look at me while you're, I don't got want you to lose your, oh, we got water boiling and everything's going on here. Okay. Uh, but you are the director of field education right. for Christ the King Seminary. Yes which is serving the Diocese of Buffalo and other dioceses yes. in Western New York. And, and where are some of the other dioceses from which seminarians and people to be trained in ministry come? Well, most recently Erie, but also right now St. Catharines. St. Catharines, Ontario, okay. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, met earlier in the program one of the, Venetius, right. and he's, from, he's studying for the Diocese of Buffalo, but from Nigeria. He told us a little bit about the central city experience. Right. We want to talk about that. And you coordinate where people go and you work out their uh, ministry assignments and that, right. right? Right. During the academic year, they all go out into various assignments. But during the summer, we have a 10-day immersion where we all actually at this point are all staying together in one uh, parish. And so last summer, we were at Saints Columba and Bridget. This oh, summer, we'll be back there. We'll be at Family Promise Shelter Oh, terrific! during the yeah. time that there aren't people needing the shelter. I got my pan is nice and hot, but we're going to make a broth, right? Yes. Tell us how we're going to do that. I okay. got the boiling water. So you have six cups of hot water. Okay. And then to that we're going to add... Which goes first? The water or the rice? The what? The sh you yeah. tell me. I got the water here. The water. Water can go first. Yeah. We got six cups of boiling water. And what we're going to do is put the... Uh, three cubes of bouillon. Three chicken bouillon cubes. Right. Or uh, we recently made broth on the show too. You could always do your own, right? Mm -hmm. Chicken broth. Yes. Okay. It's got to be good, strong broth. Yes. And uh, then we'll add our saffron. Saffron's a you know, kind of unique ingredient. To yes, it paella. is. And it's something that really makes the flavor. I don't know anything that tastes like saffron. It's it is also one of the most expensive. It is the most expensive. Expensive spice in the world. A little yeah. tiny. It comes from the inside of the, what, crocuses? That's right, crocus. In for about one week a year, Spain and other countries have the crocus in bloom and blossom. And they pick out three of those strands from each flower. So it's highly, you know, it takes, yeah, a, it takes a long time. Of, now, could uh, you get this from regular crocuses we? Uh, no. Why not? Well, I don't know. They're just not the same kind of crocus. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and certain, you know, countries yeah. are very good at it. Sure. Legacy. So that's why so Spain how much is something. Put, that's a little put all goes that. a long way, or the whole package. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well. Oh sure. While we're at it, let's just put this in. Bay leaf. And uh, we can put our. We're going to put some bay leaf and the wine. The wine. This is a little bit of wine. Well, that's hardly enough even to make a difference. Oh well. Okay. That's right. fine. <laughs> we'll put some pepper and salt, but there's enough salt because the wine because the wine has salt. Okay. It's oh, it's cooking, a cooking wine. Cooking okay. wine. Right. So it doesn't make so much difference. So olive oil goes in the pan. Yeah. 
Just to cover the bottom, is that it? That's right. And once it's hot, I guess it is hot. It's, it's getting there, yeah. All right, then we can put the rice in. All right. Now, how many cups of rice or do actually, we have? Actually, let's start with the chicken. Let's first brown the chicken. We're going to brown the chicken. Okay. Then we'll take that out. Now, you've got chicken thighs in here. Yes. So, am I going to take that out after I brown it? Yeah, we're going to take it out. So, the you thing know. about paella is, it's kind of like ministry. It's a lot of different things put together to come up with a delicious dish, but they don't, they're not all the same. they got to cook them at different times, don't you? Yeah. The chicken cooks longer than the shrimp. Right. The clams will be put in probably maybe the last minute, or when do you do no, those? those? Those take a good 20 minutes, too, because they have to open up. Have to open up, okay. So and the chicken, fine. now, are we going to cook this all the way through, or is that going to continue to we're cook? Gonna, we're going to brown it and turn it over. Okay. okay. And when's the rice going to go in? Let's put it in now, because you've got a big paella. You only have a little, you know, oh, sure. it's not yeah. taking up a lot of room. Okay. Now, when I was in the, I did a Central City Experience uh, 30 years ago. You did. But it was my summer assignment. Yeah. It wasn't a living, it was my summer assignment on the east side of Buffalo. I was yeah. at uh, St. Mary's Sorrows, and I loved it. It was a real cultural difference, though. I mean, it was not a shock, but it was just a great experience. Uh, mm -hmm. And it really, I think the great thing about this live-in and these experiences is that it really, um, it really changes your perspective on things. What do you think? Oh, I think that it, it gives each person something different. For each person, it's something that they need. Uh -huh. So for me, it was a spiritual uh, experience. And uh, for other people, of course, it's maybe their introduction to American urban life or to the city that they uh, grew up in or their parents grew up in and they haven't been back to. Uh -huh. So it gets you off the expressway and it puts you right in the neighborhood. And it gets you, you off the expressway and puts you right in the neighborhood. I like that. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, so you get to kind of have the sounds and the feel of summertime in the city. Does this broth go in soon or yet? Or no? uh, yes, I think we get, now's a great time. Put it right in now. Okay. So six cups of stock with the saffron. That looks beautiful. With some bay Look leaf. That. Yeah. Look at how that's, okay. Let me get the rest of our little chicken flavor there. Now your bouillon that you buy in the store too, that will add a lot of uh, salt. It adds a lot of salt, <laughs> a lot of salt right, so, you don't so you're need... all set. Let me ask you though, while we're waiting that for to finish off, what would be the biggest misconception people have about Central City Ministry, would you say? Um, I think it's that the folk, they think that we're coming in to fix things, oh. that we are there to help. And that's not very accurate at all. I mean, there's so much good, work that goes on on the part of the people who live in the city and the people who worship in the city, the ministers there, that it's pretty humbling to go there and to mm -hmm. see what people do to make their neighborhood work while they're making their church work. It's, it's, it's neighborhoody. That the quality of life can be very, very um, impressive mm -hmm. in spite of the fact that you've got a lot of challenges. So th we're going to put what in? We'll just throw the, um, the peas. peas on top and then we're going to put shrimp. You like a lot of this. I do. Cilantro. Oh, oh. That is, with that saffron and cilantro, cilantro that's like the, the taste of Spain right in the dish, isn't it? That's true. Let's yeah. see. You want to look through your little, we got little stone clams. You can put in. Uh, yeah, dip them right in there. You Father, could put in don't. sausage. You could put in uh, yes. mussels. Yeah. Uh, chorizo is nice. Chorizo, oh, yeah. So that's one thing we could put in. A little spice if you want. Yes. We got but chicken and some seafood and clam and, and as I said they all go in a little bit different. The chicken you don't you don't want to put in first. And then the different things they get done at different times. So we're all set with this one. Okay. All right. All righty. And you want to be very careful because I don't want to uh, spill any of that beautiful juice. So it's going to go in for about 20, 25 minutes. At what temperature about? 400. 400. Uh, no, okay. no. 350. 350, 400, okay. And then out it comes like this. Oh, how beautiful. Just garnish it with a garnish little lemon. Garnish it with lemon. lemon. Oh, I love lemon too. And that. Lemon is, speaks of the Mediterranean too, doesn't that's it? That's true. That's true. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This, how nice. Okay. Paella. With, oh, oh, <laughs> with Kathy Castillo, who's the director of field education at our seminary in Buffalo, New York. But where we are, there's a lot of ways we can live in the central city or different. You know, just go somewhere you haven't been before. 
go to maybe a soup kitchen or something, just sit down and kind of talk to people, get to know them. It's really a wonderfully opening experience. And you'll find that like the paella, you know, people are all different and yet there's something there's a lot that of brings flavor. us all together. A lot yeah. of flavors. Yeah. Are you writing my material? No, I'm just That's saying. terrific. It's been Let's a good, good. I guess time. you made some uh, flan too, huh? Yes, we have flan. Wow. Right. Uh oh. Yeah. This looks terrific too. Y you know, we don't have time, obviously, to do the whole flan recipe, but right. you can find this on our website at odbtv.org. Here's a bonus recipe for you online at odbtv.org. Oh, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Nice caramel on top, just like it should be. How perfect. Oh, what a great way to end this it's program. It's easy, but it's a big popular thing to, you know, it's a, a yes. nice. Hey, Kathy, would you like to say a little prayer before we eat? God, we thank you for the opportunity to be uh, part of ministry in all the areas of the, of the diocese. And uh, we ask you to bless those people who are in urban ministry and those who make our lives so flavorful and colorful with their day-to-day uh, their -day lives and bless this food. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much. I'm so glad you made it. I'm Thanks. so glad you got the paella. I can't wait to have a taste of it. Please, if you're at home now, be in touch with us at some point. We love to hear your e emails and your phone calls. And of course, we've got our website and that bonus flan recipe at odbtv.org. Okay. There we go.